prominent Northside businessman William C. Fawcett worked with state legislators to pass the Hoxie Walnut Ridge Bill in 1903. And that bill would allow municipalities or portions thereof located within a mile of each other to consolidate if the residents of both localities approved it at the polls. And you know, on the surface, it looked like that was written to allow the northeast Arkansas towns of Hoxie and Walnut Ridge to consolidate, which they later did. But it would also allow the newly formed town of North Little Rock, which had been formed in 1901, just beyond today's railroad viaduct in today's mid-city neighborhood, to turn around and annex the 8th Ward of Little Rock in 1903. Little Rock appealed the annexation, but on February 6, 1904, the Arkansas Supreme Court upheld the Hoxie Walnut Ridge Bill and the annexation vote. Argento was free at last. <laughs> Residents of the new city, which was officially North Little Rock until 1906 when it was changed back to Argenta, almost unanimously elected William C. Bill Fawcett as the first mayor. The city's eight-member council met for the first time on April 11, 1904, on the second floor of the 1895 fire station at 506 Main Street. A newly remodeled space above the fire station served as city hall from 1904 to 1915, when the building at 300 Main opened. Bill Foss had served as mayor of Argenta from 1904 to 1909, and again from September 1910 until February 1911, when he resigned to serve in the Arkansas House of Representatives. At that time, his younger brother, James P. Jim Fawcett, was appointed to fill the vacancy and was elected to a full term in April 1911, serving until April 1917. Bill Fawcett, who was known as the founding father of Argenta, died in January 1914 at the age of 48. And completed after his death, North Little Rock City Hall was dedicated to his memory. In 1886, Dye Chapel, later known as Dye Memorial Chapel, which was a Methodist church named in honor of charismatic pastor John H. Dye, D-Y-E, was built here at the northeast corner of Main and Broadway. The city of Argenta purchased this site from the Methodist church in 1913 for $8,000 to build a new city hall. In February 1914, the Argenta City Council appropriated $75,000 for the construction of City Hall and hired architect John L. Howard to draw up plans for the building. The Schmelzer and Shea Construction Company of Little Rock served as general contractor, and the company began excavation work on April 2, 1914. The workers soon experienced problems with quicksand. Then Mayor James P. Fawcett later recalled the struggle, saying, quote, I can remember the mules. Their hooves would sink into the quicksand, and as soon as they lifted a foot, the hole would close up. Which brings us to the legend of the cotton bales. According to local legend, Mayor James P. Fawcett traveled to New Orleans, where he learned a common technique to stabilize foundations using cotton bales. Workers were then instructed to pour a concrete slab 14 inches thick with surrounding walls of equal thickness to form a big hole. And then that was filled with cotton bales to stabilize the foundation of the building. However, this is bogus. <laughs> James P. Fawcett never mentioned cotton bales in association with the construction of City Hall. And according to historians, the cotton bale technique was never a common practice in New Orleans anyway. More than likely, North Little Rock Mayor Ross Lawhon actually started the cotton bale legend whenever he mentioned it in 1949 in the Arkansas Gazette. In a Gazette article just published just three days later, James P. Fawcett set the record straight, saying that the quicksand problem was solved by pouring a concrete slab 10 inches thick, braced with one inch fabricated steel. So I don't think there's any cotton bells down there. <laughs> cornerstone for Argenta's new city hall was laid in the southwest corner of the building on July 27, 1914 at 5.30 p.m. Mayor James P. Fawcett placed a sealed copper box in a small recessed area in that cornerstone, which was then enclosed with a layer of cement. A complete inventory of the items placed in the box 
was signed by J.P. Fawcett, and it was placed in, uh, kept in the records of the city minute books. Its contents include, there are many things in the box, but some of the items are, an obituary of William C. Fawcett, photos of the first three mayors of Argenta, W.C. Fawcett, Edward A. Ramsey, and J.P. Fawcett, rosters of city, county, and state officials at that time, newspapers, membership rosters of local fraternal organizations, and coins. The grand opening and dedication of Argenta's new city administration building took place on July 5, 1915 at 8.30 p.m. An estimated 3,000 people attended the dedication ceremony, which included speeches by Mayor J.P. Fawcett and Governor George W. Hayes as well as music from a small orchestra in the Argenta Dixie Quartet. Jim Fawcett declared the building indestructible, saying, quote, this building is constructed to stand for all time. There is nothing in its makeup that will decay or burn. It is built throughout of non-destructible, non-deteriorating material, such as reinforced concrete, brick, vitrified tile, Florentine marble, terracotta, steel, and copper. The two-story building with a full basement was constructed and furnished at a cost of just over $90,000 and housed the city's administrative offices, council chambers, municipal court, police department, and 16-cell jail, which is in the basement. Designed in the neoclassical style by architect John L. Howard, North Little Rock City Hall featured rows of fluted ionic columns on its western and southern elevations an accentuated front entrance crowned by an arched pediment and a rooftop balustrade. This style was based on classical forms of Greek and Roman architecture and was often used on public buildings as a symbol of democracy, and it gained popularity once again after the Chicago World's Fair of 1893. Now a little bit about the architect, John Howard. Architect John Lewis Howard was born August 17, 1867, in Saline County, Missouri, to John C. Howard and his wife, Mary Lewis Howard. And Saline County, Missouri is kind of central in the state between Columbia and Kansas City. Howard began his architectural practice in 1890 at Kansas City after serving an apprenticeship as a carpenter and construction superintendent. His designs included the Stevens Opera House at Boonville, Missouri, Columbia Transfer Warehouse Company at St. Louis, the Brazil Pavilion at the 1904 St. Louis World's Fair, and the Fire Brigade Headquarters at Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. Howard moved to St. Louis about 1893 and lived there until about 1906 when he relocated to Little Rock. From at least 1908 to 1910, Howard worked for well-known architect George R. Mann, who in 1899 was commissioned to design the Arkansas State Capitol. Now, pre previously, George R. Mann had lived in St. Louis, explaining their association. North Little Rock City Hall was modeled after a bank. I've already had lots of people come in and ask me if it wasn't a bank originally. It was never a bank. It was always City Hall. But it was modeled after a bank, possibly the 1913 Bank of Commerce, which was designed by George R. Mann and stood at the northeast corner of 3rd and Main Streets in Little Rock until 1968, when it was demolished as part of a downtown urban renewal project. The designs for North Little Rock City Hall and the Bank of Commerce are almost identical, and Sandra brought an old newspaper article that shows the old Bank of Commerce, so you can look at that if you would like. The main difference being the use of Corinthian columns on the bank building instead of ionic columns like they used on City Hall. So, either Howard did a lot of the design work for that Bank of Commerce building whenever he worked for George R. Mann, or he copied heavily from Mann's design whenever he did this building. Howard remained in Little Rock until about 1916, and then he spent a few years in Tulsa, Oklahoma, before returning to Kansas City. He never married and lived mostly in hotels and boarding houses. Now, here's the twist. On June 15, 1934, a fisherman found the body of John L. Howard in the Missouri River near Leavenworth, Kansas, and he'd been missing from his Kansas City home since April 23rd. And nobody knows what happened to him that I know of. He was 66 years old. Now about the interior spaces in this building. I told you already it has a full basement. 
A large portion of the basement accommodated the city jail. And a kitchen where meals were cooked for prisoners was also located in the basement. The city jail remained in the basement of City Hall until 1962 when a new police and courts building was completed on Pershing Boulevard. In the mid-1960s, Mayor Casey Lehman had the old cell blocks dismantled in sections and removed from the basement. Mayor Lehman placed a four-cell four section of the old jail out at Burns Park, where he intended for it to serve as a, quote, memento and, and or a play facility for children. <laughs> it's still out there. I went and looked at it the other day. It's still out there. It's just west of Funland, kind of in a little grove of trees. So if you drive out there sometime, go, go find the old part of City Jail. And the basement now at City Hall is used for storage and mechanical systems. Now here in the lobby, various administrative offices have occupied both sides of the front portion of the lobby. The city clerk and treasurer's office has long been on the north side. All the money collected by the city of North Little Rock passes through this department. And this includes everything from business licenses to code enforcement fines. And people used to pay all of their utility bills here at City Hall. That's the teller windows. They took in a lot of money. And you can see, some of you are probably, yeah, you're standing right over it. There's some dips in the marble floor, a big one right there where your shoe is. Yep, where people have stood for many years to pay their bills. <laughs> And you'll also be allowed to take a peek into the two-story vault over here on the north side in just a few minutes. The iron bars were removed from the teller windows on the south side of the lobby sometime in the 1980s. And some offices on that side, as you can see if you look through over here through the glass, have been enclosed. And that was done about 1992. It was originally open like it is on the north side. Now on the back portion of the first floor, if you can go back through this doorway in just a little bit to take a look, that was originally the, the police department. And there was a separate entrance for that area off of Broadway, which there still is. Uh, the back staircase goes right up from that entrance, goes right up to the municipal court, which is up here at the top of the stairs originally. And it still says municipal court on the exterior of the building above the Broadway entrance. The police department and municipal court, along with the jail, moved out of City Hall in 62 to go to the new building on Pershing. And the old police department area is now the city attorney's office. On the second floor, this portion above me, the front portion of the second floor, housed the mayor's office, other administrative staff, and a small conference room. The mayor's suite was rehabilitated in two phases, the first in 2001 and second in 2004. And during that rehab, Clements and Associates Architects uncovered a stained glass skylight with the City of Argenta logo in the mayor's conference room. Not this one, another one. And they also exposed the door to the original press room, which was hidden by two pieces of paneling. In 1970, Mayor Casey Lehman, who was frequently crossed with reporters, moved the press room from upstairs near his office downstairs to a much smaller space where it remains today. It's pretty much like a little press room closet. And you can see that too. The back portion of the second floor, the current city council chambers back here, was originally divided into two separate rooms. The north side was the municipal court and the south side was the council chambers. Shortly after the municipal court moved out of this building in 1962, the council chambers expanded into the entire space. And it was redecorated with some really groovy wood paneling and a drop ceiling. The mayor's and council's desks were moved to the north side of the room at that time where they remain today. And there were originally four pairs of windows on the upper floor of the building on the eastern elevation, the back wall of the building. And all of those windows were bricked in during the early 60s during that renovation to reduce noise and traffic on Broadway. But in 2005, the council chambers were rehabilitated, that drop ceiling was removed, and two of those sections of windows were reopened. Some notable features of the building. The building's exterior is made out of cast stone and terracotta block. The original one over one wood windows were removed and replaced in the early 1970s with narrow metal frame windows divided by this big panel of solid aggregate material. It was very unattractive. 
and that was done in an effort to improve energy efficiency. The windows were restored in 2001 with help from grants from the Arkansas Historic Preservation Program. The interior of the lobby, where we are now, is finished with imported Florentine marble. The floors behind the teller windows on both sides were originally tiled, and you can see some of that original tile on the south side in Mr. Billings' office underneath the rug, if you'd like to look. And there are a total of four skylights in the building. Three of them are stained glass, like this one, not as big as this one. There's one here, one right through there at the landing by the City of Argenta logo on them. And the fourth skylight is just plain glass, and it's above the back staircase. And speaking of that, the City of Argenta, or C of A, or CA logo is featured prominently throughout the building's interior. It appears on the skylights, the capitals of the columns here in the lobby, the triangular pediment above the staircase. You can see it better if you go up on the second floor. You can see CA up there. The brass wall sconces, many of them have a little CA on them. I know you can see them easily on these two up here at the top of the stairs as well as the doorknobs. Make sure to check out the door hardware. And the mayor's chair in the city council chambers, the original mayor's chair has the city of Argenta logo on it too. And North Little Rock was called Argenta until 1917, whenever the name was changed to North Little Rock, at the urging of James P. Fawcett, who thought that it would you know, improve and increase property values because of the city's association with Little Rock. The original brass door hardware has the Arkansas State seal on it at the top, and then the doorknob itself says Argenta Administration Building, 1914. The bronze tablets in the lobby, there's one here and one here on either side of the staircase. The one over here on the north side is just the general building tablet, official building tablet, has the building's date, the architect, the builders, and the city officials at that time. And the, the tablet over here on the south side is a memorial tablet to William C. Fawcett and reads, quote, This, the administration building of the city of Argenta, Arkansas, is erected in memory of William C. Fawcett, the first mayor and chief counselor of the city. May future generations look upon this tablet and know that to his wisdom and untiring energy, their city owes its existence. And may this building stand forever, a tribute of gratitude, to perpetuate the name of him whose first thought was for his people and for his city. And the last thing I want to point out, the second floor columns, notice they look a little bit different than all the other marble in the lobby. That's because they're not real marble. They're scagliola, which is a plaster used to imitate marble and precious stones. And it's almost you know, an extinct thing. Very few people can actually do this anymore. But this is a very, very old art form, and it's actually more valuable than some of the real marble in the building. Now, please feel free to look around. We are not going to go in the basement, so don't do it. Uh, and also, you're allowed to take a peek into the vault, but please don't go all the way inside. Just look in the door, take a peek, and then go out. Uh, upstairs, in the council chambers, we have a PowerPoint on loop, which is narrated, and it'll repeat a little bit of the stuff that I said, but it'll show you pictures of old Argenta and also of City Hall and some interesting things about City Hall that I talked about if you want to check that out. And we have bottled water available in the coolers at the top of the stairs, and that's provided to you for free from Central Arkansas water as long as you recycle your bottle. There are recycling bins upstairs. I'm serious. Um, and again, I want to thank everybody here at City Hall for letting us be here today. Our next tour is August 7th at Oak Forest United Methodist Church on Fair Park Boulevard. Thank you.